aren't just for the military these days. Close enough. Amateur drone hobbyists are adapting and building remote-controlled flying objects, rigging basic electronics under the likes of a grape tomato lid. Today, these drone makers are slapping a GoPro camera on top that records in HD and has a live video output so users can see what the camera up high is seeing in real time. Mostly, amateurs are just using the drones for fun. I, I actually did a private pilot's license, but my wife doesn't allow me to fly anymore. Um, due to the dangers and this kind of provides an, a similar experience to flying. One interactive designer by trade, Jason Short, recently took his quadcopter drone out for a spin at San Francisco's Corona Heights. Some hobbyists seem less enthralled with all the stunning video footage than with the fact that the plane can be programmed on missions and essentially fly on autopilot. Put in waypoints and have it fly a mission you know, of going from waypoint to waypoint that you can just kind of park the plane up in the sky and then when you're ready to continue, you can just to tell it you continue flying itself or you can take a manual control. Not only can they down leak its position, they can watch on their map where it's going. These new drones one-up their remote control plane cousins by going into computer-assisted or even self-stabilization and autopilot modes. If the plane is going this way, you'll see here, it's actually correcting on the wings. Like say if it's, if it's ducking down, you'll see the tail is starting to correct. Low-cost Arduino microcontrollers have brought high-end capability into the hands of amateurs. But there's also technology that's been developed for and is present in mobile phones like GPS. And all that is becoming cheaper, bringing sophisticated drone technology into hobbyist range. Uh, we have an accelerometer and a gyro chip that uh, you know, literally is just a few millimeters across. And being able to get all of that uh, in such a small package means that now it's light enough or small enough that you can put it onto an aircraft and put it up in the air. But the drone is DIY, so things can easily go wrong. Oh, I tell you this, I tell you we're in trouble. Oh, uh, there's something wrong with the plane right now. A quick reconfiguration. A matter of getting the, uh, the sensors reinitialized. But being DIY, problems are easy to fix. <laughs> So I'm flying above us. Most amateur drones are being flown under rules that govern remote control airplanes. Generally observed protocol means none can go above 400 feet. I don't think you could use these levels of drones to do a lot of spying. Like, like you heard how noisy they were. If, if one of these things is flying around in your backyard, yeah, you would know somebody was uh, looking at you. Mostly though, it's just good fun. After the required bravado flybys, the drone usually comes back home. In San Francisco, I'm Andy Jordan for the Wall Street Journal.